Why do we look at the calendar? Because we're trying to find high conviction, high probability trading opportunities. You can see here we had 115, the ADP jobs data coming in above market maximum expectations, priors revised higher. That gave us a clear bias for a euro dollar sell outlook. Now, just taking a look at markets, we were clearly expecting euro dollar sellers if we saw a high print. We also had geopolitical risk giving a further boost to the dollar. So that just gave us that added conviction of a euro dollar sell. And we can see that when we had that 115 release, price just moved significantly lower from 115 and it's moved all the way down into daily support. That wouldn't be a bad target and there's potential for a break of these daily lows and maybe even a run down to that big round number of 1.100. Now we've obviously got non-farm payrolls coming up and US jobless data, but nevertheless, just commencing does just usual. show a good example of why we're looking at the calendar to find those high probability conviction trading opportunities where the market is very likely to move in one direction. Week ahead, what do we have coming up that's of interest? So first thing for us to look at is the RBNZ interest rate meeting. Now, the cheat sheet will have a full update on what to look for. But if you remember from the last RBNZ interest rate meeting, they shift ex expectations and gave a much more dovish outlook, which resulted in some significant New Zealand dollar selling out of the meeting. Be interesting to see where they're at now, particularly what they're thinking about in terms of interest rate um, cuts. Now, if I look at short term interest rate markets, if I just look over to my right and check out what expectations are currently, there's a 100% chance of a 50 basis point rate cut. So markets are fully pricing in a 50 basis point rate cut. So if they don't cut by 50, but that will be a surprise could give us a decent upside in the Aussie New Zealand dollar if they become more dovish. Uh, likewise, we could get an Aussie New Zealand dollar trade if they only cut by 25 basis points. We could see a little bit of Aussie New Zealand dollar uh, downside if we saw a surprise uh, from the RBNZ. We'll have the cheat sheet completely up to date. I'll need to refresh myself exactly what to look for and I'll have that updated. But definitely RBNZ rate meeting worth looking at, particularly for the Aussie New Zealand dollar pair that we've been sort of bob uh, bobbing around in uh, this year. We'll see if there's a divergence that begins to materialize or widen. US CPI, yes, I know inflation data is not so important anymore, but that's why we're looking at it. We wanna just check that the US CPI continues coming in benign. Um, if we see any big surprises, then all of a sudden you'll see the dollar strengthen significantly because markets will suddenly rethink what they've assumed. And the assumption right now is that inflation is yesterday's battle and the Fed need to work harder at um, making sure that the employment aspect of their mandate is met and US CPI is less important. So we'll just check it, could be completely nothing. Um, or we could see an opportunity, definitely one to look for. And then finally, we had it, just what we wanted. Bank of England's Bailey finally indicated that there could be aggressive rate cuts if inflation keeps falling down in the UK. That resulted in some heavy selling in, this, in the last week uh, for the pound. What we're looking for here is something that adds urgency to that potential aggressive rate cut outlook. So still tentative at this stage um, and we need to see data start backing up the Bank of England's aspirations. But analysts, forecasters, economists have been saying, you know, when's the Bank of England going to do this? When are they going to turn? So there's a real sense of expectancy. Big miss in the GDP on Friday could give a short term opportunity in the pound. Definitely one to look for and an opportunity that we will be checking out on October the 11th. So they're the main drivers. Bit of, bit of a quieter week as we look across the markets, but that does mean that the euro pound buy bias is still in play. Just keep an outlook for the cheat sheet and any further updates on that euro pound uh, buyers that we're expecting. We will of course update it in the cheat sheet. Okay, have a very good week and see you in the webinars and we'll be updating the cheat sheet as we go through the week as usual.